All right, folks. So today we are in, I guess here I have it listed as the fourth step of match motion, um, if you include filming, but everywhere else I have it as three. Regardless, uh, today is the composure class. This, this may be the most confusing class of all the classes, uh, not only because composure itself is confusing, but also because today we are bringing everything together. And I'm recording. Uh, we're also scheduled to do our our training for the media commons today, but that might get chopped depending on how this goes in the beginning of class. Okay. So if it does get chopped, we, I may just ask you to do it individually. Sorry. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Maybe maybe y'all are already know how to do this and we can just wrap it up in five minutes but i doubt that so after today next week is supposed to be more strictly about exporting from composure and bringing that back into after effects or resolve or whatever compositing software that you're using but that is fairly straightforward i think most of you have some compositing experience so that's not really a ton of new stuff once we get the files out. And then after that, this class really becomes more just like a creative class and lots of workshop and brainstorming and talking about making treatments and previs and blocking final projects out, all that sort of stuff. So you could think of today as kind of the last big class where I'm throwing a bunch of new stuff at you. You're welcome. But it is some big new stuff. Okay. And we don't have much time. All right. So yeah. So pipeline part three, we've gone through the whole gamut here. After Effects, our 3D digital content creation software in Unreal. If you found, perhaps you found a way to skip one of these steps. If so, that's awesome. Uh, if you have any sort of tips and suggestions, it'd be great if you could share with the group instead of keeping all the secrets to yourself. And, you know, perhaps you know how to do tracking in Blender or know how to do tracking in Cinema and can bypass the After Effects step useful to know. Uh, perhaps you are using a plugin that goes straight from After Effects to Unreal. They exist. They've existed for a long time, uh, but they have quirks. Some of them do. Uh, perhaps you, you can use that. Uh, it'd be really useful if you have that knowledge, if you can share. Not for me, but for your friends. Uh, so you know, we've, we've gone over, over the last couple of weeks, a lot of different ways to get cameras and video footage into Unreal. At its most simplest level, I think we did the very second class, maybe the first class, I don't recall. We put video on a plane, we place it somewhere in the world. Simple, right? I guess the video setup process is a little tedious, but after that, it's pretty simple. We drive the camera around, we point it at it, it works. We see our video in a world. Another way that we could do things is one thing we haven't introduced yet is using what's called an image plate in Unreal. An image plate is a plate, uh, a, basically a plane uh, that is fully aligned to the camera. So it's basically a, a plane that is parented to the camera that footage is put on. It is full screen, full aspect ratio of the camera and wherever the camera points, the video goes along with it. That is really useful because you don't have to worry about going around the edge of your video or anything like that. Image plates are probably the most common way of doing this sort of stuff in the visual effects industry, outside of Unreal even. What we will be doing today is we'll be using a media plate using something called composure in Unreal. All these have their own strengths, 
The simple one, we already talked about this. Put, a, put your video on a plane in the world. It's easy. There can be camera alignment issues if you're not careful about things. You don't get camera tracking, though. You don't have camera tracking with what we've done uh, in Unreal already, right? We're just driving our camera around and steering it towards our footage, which you can do a lot of cool stuff with still. Absolutely. And also, as we go over these methods quickly here, don't think that I'm saying that you only have to do composure for your final project, okay? Everything that we've learned in here is fair game for the final project. Uh, we spent a lot of time on composure and tracking and all that stuff. But if it just doesn't work for a shot in your film, I'm not going to sit here with your grade sheet and check off marks for like, all right, did composure. Okay, came from Cinema 4D and not did not skip that step. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. All these are tools to make something cool in the end. All right. We can talk about final projects, though, in the future. So the next step, like I would say, would be to use the image plate plugin. This is not turned on by default. Uh, this is a plugin that needs to be enabled in Unreal. It is built into Unreal. You just need to enable it. And as you can see here, this is video footage that is attached to the camera on a plane. And then you put 3D elements on top of it or in the foreground in between uh, the camera and the background. It's basically video footage that's stuck to your screen like this. Exactly like this. If the camera was moving, uh, then you would see the environment move too. You could use this with camera tracking. If the camera moved without camera tracking, it might be a little weird because it's not going to match up with your video footage. So that's kind of easy to do. Eh, it's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, there aren't any alignment issues because the plane cannot be skewed. I guess technically it can be skewed, but you're not supposed to. Uh, you can track with the camera in that case. But the downside of this is that this is not bypass Unreal's tone mapper which I'm sure you've noticed if you've imported video footage into Unreal, which you all should have, you may notice that the color kind of sucks, right? It's a little washed out. It doesn't look like your original video footage, right? That's because the way that Unreal's rendering system is set up using a deferred rendering system, that video footage is getting rendered in the middle of the pipeline before any sort of uh, post-processing is happening and what's called the Unreal Engine Tone Mapper, which gives Unreal its kind of look. It's just post-processing, uh, which is kind of color grading your footage for better or for worse. If you are making games or just making worlds in Unreal without video, it's fine, you don't really notice it. Uh, but if you're importing video footage, it's really disappointing when your video footage looks like shit when you import it into Unreal, right? or even not that bad, if it just looks different, that's a problem. Uh, so this does not bypass the tone mapper and also this does not give us uh, render layers. So we can't render out our foregrounds and backgrounds as easily as we can with the last method here. The last method is using a friend by the name of Composure. Composure is a tedious pipeline there's just a lot of steps. I don't think it's too difficult. You just got to do all the steps. And there's a lot of places that you can crash and burn because you forgot to do one of the steps. Uh, and it allows us to do all this other stuff that we couldn't do. It doesn't have alignment issues because it's stuck to the screen. It's not, it's not video footage isn't in your world as a plane. The video footage isn't a plane attached to your camera like it is with the image plate. This is video footage that is attached to your screen as a part of the rendering pipeline, meaning that it bypasses Unreal Engine's tone mapper. So the video footage will look like it does in After Effects or wherever you're viewing it. We can use camera tracking with this. We can do real time compositing if we had, you know, a, uh, what do we got? One of, one of these guys here, or even like a webcam bringing a video signal into uh, our computer, we could do live green screen and key it out. 
if we wanted to. Uh, this class isn't really about real-time compositing, uh, so we're not doing that. We're more using video footage. Uh, it is a layer-based compositing method in Unreal, which we are all familiar with layer-based compositing. We've used After Effects, we've used Unreal. We're familiar with those things. Uh, we can we can access this with blueprints if we wanted to do something programmatic with it, perhaps for an installation. Uh, we can render out shadow catchers. Shadow catcher is an invisible material that does exactly that. It catches the shadow of 3D objects so that the shadows can be composited back on top of the 2D video footage. You know, perhaps you've already noticed bringing in your video into Unreal looks a little bit weird if none of the 3D objects are casting shadows on top of the video footage. It's going to be even more true in Composure. That's why we would need to use something like Composure to make the shadow catcher material. If you're familiar with 3D tools like Cinema or Maya, Blender, they also have shadow catcher materials that allow you to render out just the shadow on alpha to composite back into your scene. And also Composure allows us to output render layers separately, foregrounds, backgrounds, different mats if we need to. Uh, it's, it's just the most, it's most like actual VFX pipelines, this Composure with Unreal. It is still a little work in progress. And it definitely does not have the full momentum of Epic Games behind it because predominantly still a, a games company. Um, but this is their attempt to make VFX uh, compositing work in Unreal professionally. And I think you can see, because this class exists, because all the other stuff going on in the world, that it's going in a positive direction. And that's going to continue to be the case. At least until we all go back to Unity, right? That's a joke. So this class is an introduction to compositing with Composure. Uh, there is not a ton of documentation for Composure, but they do have these this quick start stuff that has a lot of animated GIFs to walk you through the process. I'm going to quickly go through those in this lecture before we do the hands-on demo for the majority of our class. Uh, full disclosure, all of the documentation is using Unreal Engine 4. Not a big deal. The menus are just a little bit of a different color. It's the same stuff, though. Unreal Engine 5 is really just Unreal Engine 4.28. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a different coat of paint on top. Also, definitely check out the documentation, uh, even if you don't have questions. So this video here is for an uh, engine sample that Epic includes for how to use Composure. It uses EXR files of Epic's old campus in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's what that building is and the ground and the chairs and the tree. All of that is video footage. The only thing actually in that scene that is CG is the robot man. As you can see there. This was put together using Composure. You can download that Composure project if you want to rip it apart. I will warn you, that Composure project will likely kick your ass. It kicked my ass for a few years, and then finally I got to a point where I kind of understood it. <laughs> a couple student assistants went by, and we figured it out. A couple of them quit. Like, I'm not doing this Composure shit anymore. <laughs> kind of a true story. Not, not totally, but kind of. Um, also be advised, if you do download this, it's an enormous project because it includes image sequences, uh, EXR image sequences of the video footage there. It, it is fairly out of date, though, at this point. I mean, it's five years old, 2017. Uh, but that is where we start from. There also is this video, Real-Time Compositing Basics, Again, this is Unreal Engine 4, because we only just switched over to 5. But another good tutorial video if you want a different take on 
uh, compositing using Composure than you're going to get in this class. It's cool too because you have the shiny robot guy with his materials and all those reflections and stuff from a uh, 360 HDRI shining back on him. Yeah, makes it feel really like he belongs. All right, so Composure at its most basic level, it's three things, just like really most composites. You have some sort of computer graphics background, computer graphics foreground, and then you have video in between, a video media plate in between. In this case, there's a green screen. So you're definitely going to have a CG background, maybe a CG foreground. Maybe you don't want a foreground, but usually this is what you will have uh, for a green screen shoot. In the case of a on location shoot, maybe you won't have a CG background. Maybe you're just putting assets on top of the video footage rather than sandwiching the video footage in between them. You know, think back to the footage of my daughter in the garden, right? If I just put the pumpkins in front of her, then I'm just doing a CG foreground. But if I want the pumpkin to go behind her as well as in front of her, then I need to rotoscope her out, right? So actually then I have four video, or I have four different elements, right? I would have the background media plate, I would have the CG background, then I would have the foreground media plate, which is her rotoscoped out, and then I would have the foreground computer graphics. Uh, we'll walk through that scenario today. You end up with the final composite. This is a green screen composite. This is a live green screen composite. The live compositing in Unreal is not something that we're really going to spend. We might, we might do like a show and tell if I can get it, if I can get us uh, the proper setup. Um, but it's very cool because it's live. But it is a little crunchy uh, because live compositing is is less about the fidelity and more about just the quick turnarounds. You know, if you're making you're making a cool Twitch channel or something like that, then you can deal with a little less fidelity. In this class, we're traditionally we're more focused on traditional VFX pipelines, so we want all that hair detail from the green screen. If we're going to do live compositing, we might have to uh, give that up a little bit, but we're not. If you're doing live compositing, there's also this really great plugin, third-party plugin called Offworld. Uh, Offworld is has a bunch of functionality that can allow you to port video around to different sources. Uh, perhaps you know, you're familiar with NDI or Spout. Uh, Offworld allows us to use that really easily with Unreal. If you have something from OBS that you want to get into Unreal, piece of cake with Offworld. If you want to do the reverse, send from Unreal to OBS directly, perhaps to do recording, really easy to do with Offworld. Uh, Offworld's focus is more on the live side of things rather than the offline side of things that this class is. Um, but they're doing really useful things. And all of their tutorials are hosted by avatars. So, <laughs> so there's that fun too. All right, so the initial setup here, buckle up. First off, you need to turn the Composure plug on, plugin on. Do that in the plugins page. It is not on by default. When you do that, you will probably have to rebuild shaders for a little bit, depending on how fast your computer is. So what I'll do is I usually like to have a project that is like a beginner project that I call Composure Base, and I just turn on Composure for that project, and then I'll duplicate that project to make other Composure projects rather than have to turn this on every time. Another thing that you have to do is you have to go into the Unreal Engine settings and you have to just search for alpha channel and this line will pop up. We'll do it uh, in the live demo. You need to change this to linear color space only. Some of you will probably have the problem for the assignment for this week where your foreground computer graphics, they're just sitting on black. You can't see the video footage behind them. You have everything lined up, foreground computer graphics, video, background computer graphics, but for whatever reason, your foreground computer graphics are just on black. You're not, there's no alpha channel. It's because you didn't turn this on. That's why. 
That's why it's in red. <laughs> Always happens. The off-world live avatar. I heard. I heard the voice. I know that's a very recognizable voice. All right. So after we turn on those plugins, we can import the three D camera. The way that we're importing the 3D camera in this class this semester is slightly different than we've done in the past. If you have a camera that has animation on it, you can export that as an FBX file and import that into Unreal as you would with any sort of 3D model file, okay? Or a 3D model file with animation. And it will import with keyframes if you bring that into Sequencer. I found that it's a little bit easier to use uh, the Datasmith plugin since we're using Cinema 4D. Uh, so that's the pipeline that I'm going to show. If you wanna do it with FBX files and you can get it to work and you feel good about that, that's absolutely fine. That's how we used to do it. And sometimes I'll still do that too if I'm not using, if I'm using Maya, that's how I'll do it. If I'm using Cinema, I'll do it the way that we're doing in class. So yeah, we are on this portion of things right now. So we need to set up Datasmith. This is also a plugin. We need to go into the plugins and turn on both of these things. The second one should be on already, but the first one most likely will not be, unless you've chosen one of the presets that turns it on automatically. So we need to turn on the C4D importer if we are importing from C4D. If you're not doing C4D, you don't need to do this part. And we need to set up the sequencer. The sequencer is gonna be set up automatically when we import our C4D file, which is really cool. If you're not importing the C4D file, you will have to go through these steps that I'm listing here. But since we're not doing that, since we're doing C4D, I'm not gonna bore you with these slides. These slides you can look at later on if you wanna learn how to do it manually. You import FBX file directly into sequencer. So after you've done all of that stuff, you've turned on the Datasmith, you've turned on the Composure plugin, you've, uh, you've set linear color space, then we can actually begin to use Composure. So first thing we need to do is we need to turn on the Composure window. By default, this is not on. It's another window that's gonna pop up on our main screen. Go to Window, go to Composure Compositing, I think it's actually buried in cinematics now rather than what this shows but we need to turn that on and we also need to turn on the layers window layers are uh, something that we use with with composure layers are also pretty cool to use even outside of anything to do with this class in unreal layers in unreal are a newish thing they work like layers in photoshop Basically, they're folders of assets. So say you had, I don't know, a, a, a forest scene, right? And you wanted to put all of your trees into a layer called trees. <laughs> you select all your trees in your world. You drag them into the layer called trees. Now you can turn them all on, on and off just like you would if you turned a folder off in any sort of program. Uh, really kind of powerful organizational tool for worlds that have a lot going on. In Composure, this is less of an organizational thing and more just how it's set up. Like we have to use layers to tell Composure what the foreground is and what the background is. <clears throat> so after we've popped up those two windows, I'm gonna go and do this all live too after we go through these slides. After we pop up those two windows, in the Composure window, we right click and it says create new comp. This is our, the top level of our comp. This is the root of our Composure project here. So we right click new comp and then we click on empty comp shot. After that, we're gonna create child elements that are parented to that top level comp. We're gonna create child elements for the media plate, the video footage. We're gonna create child elements for the foreground and background CG elements. Next step 
you don't necessarily have to do these next couple steps in this order. If you'd want to do the CG before you do the media plate, that's, that's absolutely fine. Now we need to create the media plates. So we need to right click on our comp up here in the composure window. We right click on that thing that we just created. And it's gonna say add layer element. And it's gonna pop up this window that looks right, right here. Right now we're doing the media plate, so we would select the media plate. This is where we put our video footage. This is the element or the plate that holds our video footage. What Composure allows us to do again, separate out the different elements, foreground elements, background elements, video elements. This is the video element. And we need to set it up. To set it up, you click on it. And then in the details panel, you assign it a media source. Uh, the media source would be the media texture and the media player that you created like we've done before with the image media source files to get our video to play in Unreal. All that stuff that we learned about how to get video into Unreal to put it on a plane, that's all the same stuff, okay? Except in this case, instead of putting it on a plane in the world, we are assigning it to the media plate in Composure, okay? Now, another thing that you should notice is that you're not gonna see anything in the main window here. All you're gonna see if you're on the default level is just the sky and the floor. Because we're not placing these things in the actual world as world objects. These are, these layers, these elements, the CG elements, the media plates, all this stuff gets placed on top of what's in the 3D world at the end of the rendering process as a step in the rendering pipeline of Unreal. So unlike what we've done, where we're sticking video into the world as a texture or a material, that's not what we're doing anymore. Uh, it, this is very much more like an actual VFX workflow. And gives us the advantage that we bypass Unreal's uh, tone mapper. So the point is, is that you might not see anything. You won't see anything until you click on one of these elements. If you wanna see the media plate, click on it and then a little window down bottom will pop up and you will see the media plate. Just like if you have a camera in your world, if you click on the camera, you'll get a little preview window through that camera feed. Okay. I think this is probably the single most frustrating things that people struggle with in the first couple minutes of composure. Why don't I see anything? Why am I just seeing a world from a weird angle? You have to kind of abstract yourself from the 3D world while looking through these different viewports can become a little bit difficult to do, especially on like a tiny laptop screen if you don't have another screen to put these viewports on. You'll see, I will struggle with it uh, window management wise as we do the demo. Next, we can set up our scene, put some assets into it, whatever, you know, just dummy assets to start unless you know which final assets you wanna do start to stick them into your scene. Assuming that you did the 3D tracking right and you lowered the floor in cinema to zero, the floor in Unreal should be the floor in your 3D tracked camera. So if you stick the chairs to the, to the grid, they should be stuck to the ground in your video footage. Fingers crossed. Next step, after we have some CG elements that we want, we need to do that right click thing again, right click on the comp. And this time we aren't doing a media plate, we are doing a CG layer. How many of these will you need? At a minimum one to make foreground CG. If you want background CG, then two. If you want more, you can create more, I suppose. So we create the CG layer. And then we need to assign the assets to it. So that's where we would do this in the layers. Right now, see our layers are empty. Nothing's been assigned to it. So I need to select the stuff that I wanna go into the layer, exactly like you would think, the chair, the statue, the table, all this stuff. I don't care about the floor because I'm placing this stuff into a world. Select this stuff and I'm going to 
You can drag it in here. You can right click and say add selected actors to do layer and you can create an empty layer and then drag them in. A lot of different ways to get them in here, but this is probably the easiest. Select the stuff, right click in the layers, add selected actors to new layer. What do you want to call that layer? I'd probably call it FG for foreground. It's just me. Or furniture. I guess I said to call it furniture in these slides. Wow. I don't even call it furniture anymore. It's FG. Once you do that, you won't see anything when you click on your CG element. It will just be black. Because you haven't told the element which layer to use yet. You've created the layer, you've put stuff inside the layer, but now we need to tell the CG element to use that layer. So we click on the CG element, we go down here, we go to Capture Actors. You may have to click the plus next to Capture Actors there. And then notice it has a drop down that says Include, because we want to include the things in this layer, right? Also, if you click the drop down, it says Exclude. You can particularly say, I want to exclude all things from this layer that I'm telling you. So include, and in this case, I only have one layer, the furniture layer that has four actors. So I select that. After you do that, if you click on your CG element, you will see, in this example, you would see this. Because we've told the CG element, you are only the things that are in the furniture layer. What's in the furniture layer? These four actors, the two chairs, the table, and the statue. Now look at this. This is pretty cool. This looks like a, a VFX pipeline here where we have these things separated out on an alpha channel. Really cool. We don't have to use fake green screen. We don't have to do anything like that. We could render this out as an EXR sequence and these things will be on transparency. Really great. You could also render out the mats separately too. I already said this. Uh, you can set it to include, you can set it to exclude for the layers. So now we've brought in our media plates. This is a little out of date, this slide, because uh, we are not doing the sequencer importing of our tracked camera. But the point is, is that we have two windows. We have our media plates, we have our CG, but they're not combined yet, right? So we need to combine them. And the way that combining them works in Unreal with Composure is that we need to make a material that actually combines them together. A material that says one of these layers is on top of the other layer. Oops. So to set this up, we need to click on the top level comp in our Composure window. When you do that, you will look in the details down bottom here. We need to go to the transform passes section. We need to click the drop down here. And we need to assign it a material. Click the drop down here. And you see there's no material in here right now. We need to create one, create a material from scratch. You can create a material from the content browser, but you can also, you see just in this animation here, if you click the window, you can click material right there and it will make a new one wherever you want to save it. You know, half dozen different ways to do the same thing in Unreal. That's where I usually create it. And what that creates for us is a blank material. This material is a little special though, compared to what we've done in the past. Materials that we've made in the past have just been coats of paint that we put on top of 3D objects, right? In this case, this is a compositing material in Composure. So we need to change some very important settings here. The most important setting to change is you click on the big node in the material editor, and then over on the left side in the details for that, you go to the material domain, and you change it from a surface material to a post-process material. Post-process materials happen at the end of the pipeline, the rendering pipeline in Unreal, which allows us to bypass the tone mapper and do all of those other quirks uh, that we can't necessarily do when we just put it in the world as a surface. This also means that lighting does not affect our video footage because all the lighting happens here 
And then at the very end of the process, the post-processing happens and it puts our video footage in there on top of any lighting that's been done for the world. So if you wanted to do any sort of fake lighting to your video footage, you would be doing that in your compositing software rather than in Unreal. And honestly, that's the place that you should be doing it because you can't really do that detailed of selections in Unreal. Beforehand with materials, you know, we were doing them as surface materials. So they actually happened when all the light, they were getting rendered when all the lighting was getting rendered. It's a very important step. Students will ask questions. How do I get, uh, you know, how do I set it up? I, I, I'm not seeing it. You probably didn't make the material post-process material. That's how you do it. And then the next setup is actually really easy. We just need to create a, param a 2D texture parameter for each of the elements that we have in Composure. We only created two. We created the media plate and we created the, the CG element one. The name that you name these things should be the name that they are in the Composure window. Very important. If you named it media plate, media underscore plate 15672, it better be called that in the Composure window. It better be called that in the material. Otherwise, it's not going to know what you're trying to do. I usually just call mine media, FG, and VG for foreground and background. If there's something more complicated where I have more elements than that, I name them accordingly. But most of the time, it's just two or three things. So we create those two 2D texture parameters. And then we have to use an overnode. Has anybody ever composited in Fusion or Nuke before? You may be familiar with the over node or the merge node takes an A input, takes a B input, puts the A over top of the B, slaps the A on top of the B, right? And then maybe you have another one and it takes that combination and slaps another A on top of the previous ones. And you could keep doing that and have a huge whole long chain of things. This is node-based compositing, different than layer-based compositing. This is how compositing in Fusion and Nuke works and how it works in Composure, um, but much easier in Composure than Nuke or Fusion. Uh, so we have our foreground element that sits on top of our media plate that sits on top of our background element. You can name these whatever that you want. The, the names are kind of arbitrary. I think it makes sense to call them foreground and media and background though. And what we want to do is we want to sandwich your media plate between the foreground and background, right? And we do that with this over node here. And it ultimately ends up looking like this. If I want my CG element here to be on top of my media plate, if I want the table and chairs and the statue to be on top of the video footage, this is how I would set it up. CG element one plugs into the A input the media plate, the video footage plugs into the B, the, B, the B input because A is on top of B. And then the output from RGBA from the over node plugs into the emissive color. Notice that if there is only one input in a post-processing material like this. Uh, other note, very, very, very important that you do RGBA not RGB. We've, we've always done RB, RGB so far in class. That's what most things are, right? For this, we need RGBA because we're also doing alpha. This is another problem that always happens. Without a doubt, someone in this class will forget to do this. Don't let that be you. Okay, so you plug the RGBAs into the over. If you wanted to have a background or you wanted to have another foreground element, you know, you could plug this output into another over node that is plugging into another CG element. And you can keep building hierarchies if you want to, or if you need to for your project. So you do all that and you click the comp at the top and it's not black anymore. It looks like this. Mission accomplished. You should feel good. You 
just went through a very tedious process and it worked. We don't have shadows yet. It's another process. Calm down. We're not there yet. <laughs> Let's just get the, the graphics on top of the video footage to start with. Uh, but that works. And if you opened up Sequencer with your tracked camera and you scrub Sequencer, you will see everything move. And those objects should be stuck to the ground. Uh, I will warn you, depending on the power of the hardware that you're using, the computer, the desktop, whatever, I mean, how much your, your PC's fans are blowing, um, if you scrub Sequencer, things may get out of alignment. The video footage and the CG graphics may look like they're not aligned. Don't panic. It's probably just because you're too aggressive with dragging the timeline slider on the sequencer and your computer's freaking out trying to catch up. Uh, be more nuanced with it. Be slower. Maybe use the arrow keys on your keyboard to advance one frame at a time. And there you should you'd be able to, to hit it fairly fast, I think, unless your computer's terrible. And there you should see that it sticks to the surface, assuming that you've done all the tracking and stuff right. That's a big assumption. Okay. But if you've done that right, then it should work. If your computer is good enough, you probably can play it and it should stick to the surface. Question? Yeah. Is there an easy way to, kind of like in After Effects, you can reduce the resolution for the preview? Is there a way to do that, like in Unreal? So that it's Not to my knowledge easily like that, where you just click a drop down. You could use proxy footage instead, but you have to you know manually assign it, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. That's the brute force method. I don't yeah, that's that would be a really great feature, right? Uh, there is another thing that you could do that may be useful. If you go into the settings, forget what it's exactly called, but oh, what you can do is you can tell Unreal to use more RAM buffer for your video footage. So it will just buffer more of the video footage, which could be a problem if your computer's not good enough because um, then you have video and memory, but all your particle effects are stuttering because you used all your memory for your video. Um, yeah, I don't think like an After Effects. That would be really awesome. I don't think so. Yeah, I when that happens, I mean, honestly, like, I usually work at a minimum in 4K video footage and I never import that full resolution into Unreal, even on a kick-ass computer that I have because I know it's still going to stutter. And honestly, I'm doing the compositing in post-production anyways. I don't ever need the video footage in Unreal. It's just for preview and alignment purposes, you know? It's just so I have uh, a template to align all my CG and stuff and then I'm going to render out the CG. I never render out the video from Unreal. I just put the video back in, in After Effects or Fusion or Resolve or whatever I'm using. Yeah. I mean, bounds of reason, though. You don't want to import super pixelated video footage into Unreal because then you can't align things up. Unless your computer's really dying, then, then maybe you should just use like a Black Friday deal and splurge a little bit on that credit card. Not saying anything. Just saying. Uh, setting up a shadow catcher with Unreal. Yeah, we'll do that later. Uh, let's let's do that later. But eventually, in the end, you know, you get shadow with Unreal. You can dial in the the density of that shadow and also render it out as a separate asset, so you can tweak those densities in uh, in your compositing software as well. So that was all kind of hypothetical in slides. I, I want to do it for real now. And this is a pretty tedious process, so bear with me if something fails. The chance of failure is quite high. <laughs> There's always some step that I'll forget to do. All right, uh, first step, you know, if I open this up, I would want to go to my plugins and I would want to type composure. I am recording this, by the way. Check, check, check. And I would want to turn on Composure. I've already done this, so we don't have to sit and wait for shaders to compile. You're welcome. And I would also want to turn on uh, Datasmith, C4D importer. 
that one's already on as well. Datasmith content, I think in Unreal Engine 5 is just on automatically. It didn't used to be in 4, in Unreal Engine 4, but this one is definitely not on. And then those are the two plugins that I need. And then I also need to go into my project settings. I don't actually know what menu it's in, so I always just type alpha. And we want to change this one. Post-processing. Enable alpha channel support and post-processing. <gasps> Experimental? Ooh, we're really pushing the envelope here. Linear color space only. That's what we want. The default is allow through tone mapper. No, 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 no. We don't want that. Linear color space only. If you don't do this, you will never get your CG graphics to be composited on top of your video. It will just be black. Okay. All right. So which step do we want to break off first? So before we even get into composure, I want to show you just how to bring in a tracked camera, period. Okay. Which is kind of a separate thing. If you... In this class, we learn camera tracking, right? Perhaps you don't want to have live action video in your 3D world. Not for a final project, but let's just say outside of this class, right? Perhaps you have a project in Unreal and you want to do some handheld shaky cam or something like that, right? You don't want to do it in sequencer with keyframes. You want to do it live, right? You don't have access to a motion capture facility because you don't go to NYU and you don't know Todd and you don't know me and all these other people. So maybe you want to use camera tracking like what we've done in After Effects to control your camera in Unreal. So you do what you've done, shoot video footage of this room, of me walking around this room vaguely to the camera movement that I want in Unreal. I could then import that camera into Unreal and use that camera just purely with Unreal. No video footage at all just as a handheld tracked camera. So we do that entirely outside of composure and really outside the, the boundaries of this class. And that's done a lot of times actually, more so with actually like real motion capture cameras. That's always better. Um, but if you don't have access to those things, you could do what we you could do the pipeline that we've done for tracked cameras to get a tracked uh, motion controlled camera, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm going to do right now, actually. Um, to make things a little bit more fun, I'm going to jump into a different level here. Uh, Tis the season, so I'm going to get some pumpkins. Very exciting world of four pumpkins. Right. Turn down my camera movement here. Good. All right, so I'm going to place this tracked camera into this world. So what I want to do is I need to import my C4D file. When we export our CD, C4D file, actually, let me just double click and show you that real quick. So I don't think we looked at that last week. There we go. After you've done the cinema setup, you've lowered the you've lowered everything to the floor. Uh, you've previewed it with the background plate. It seems like everything, all the tracking has come over into 3D. What you want to do then is we need to actually save the file. So with Cinema 4D Lite, we can't export cameras from it because you know we don't have a license. But what we can do is we can just save. So after you move it to the floor, go ahead and save. And you used to have to do save project for Cinware. I don't actually think that's the case anymore, as Cinema's not stuck back five years ago anymore. But in the interest of solving problems, let's just do save project for Cinware. And what that will do is just allow you to save out the Cinema 4D file. Okay. You just save out the C4D file. 
That's all. I've already done that. So what we're going to do is we're going to import that C4D file into Unreal. It's a little bit of a different place to do this rather than importing other sorts of assets into Unreal. We need to go up here to this little import box. And assuming that you've turned the plugin on for Datasmith, it will be right here. So click this little box, Datasmith, file import. Then find the C4D file that you want to import and just double click it. Also, uh, choose a folder for it to import to. I think I'm going to import it into this folder. And click OK. It's going to ask you what you want to import. This is also a really useful feature outside of the parameters of this class for people that know Cinema and want to get those assets into Unreal. Using Datasmith will allow you to bring over um, geometry from Cinema, models from Cinema, materials and textures from Cinema, lights, animations, cameras. If you know Cinema and that is your 3D tool of choice, you should get very familiar with Datasmith if you're using Unreal as well. That's how you can import C4D scenes into Unreal rather than having to export each asset as an FBX file, which is the traditional way. I, I will say the caveat is, is that if you have a lot of cloners and deformers and a lot of the MoGraph stuff that's in C4D, uh, that won't come over. You have to bake those things down. If none of that makes sense to you, that's all right. You don't need to know that. So when this box pops up, in this case, I want to import my camera in Cinema, the tracked camera, right? I want to import the animation with that camera. So I need cameras and animation checked. And in this case, I'm also going to import uh, the cube and the, the solid for the floor that we originally created in After Effects. So basically everything that's coming in is all this stuff. The pink thing, the cube, and the camera that's moving around. I don't need the background or any of that stuff. Okay, and click import. Depending on your computer, this might take some time. Also, if your camera track is really long, this might take some time. Uh, this should only take two minutes, I think. Uh, but this is only like 240 frames. But if you have a really long sequence, this could take a lot longer. Don't panic. Stuck at zero, I know. I want to panic right now. But it'll be okay. Any questions so far? There should be. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> This is going to be one of those ones where you need to refer to the documentation and the video and slow it down to like 0.1x speed. I don't think it's hard. I just think there's a lot of steps. But once you do it a couple times, you should get in the groove. But it's really easy to just forget something. Or panic, like 0%. Actually tested this a couple weeks ago for this class because I hadn't done it using Datasmith with C4D with Unreal Engine 5. And you would think that everything's going to work, but of course that's not always the case. Uh, and I did panic at 0%. I forced quit Unreal probably like five different times before, honestly, I probably did it and I think I went to get something to eat or I went to the bathroom or something. And I came back and it worked just because I let it do its work <laughs> instead of canceling it out. Um, so be patient. Actually getting a little nervous waiting for it. What if it doesn't work? So what we're importing right now is just the tracked camera. And then next we're going to go into the composure stuff, which will import the video footage. I'm getting nervous. The 
What if it doesn't work? What if he's making it all up? What if he's not telling the truth? What if he doesn't know what he's doing? I know that's what you're all thinking right now. <laughs> My gosh, has it been two minutes? Woo! Oh, I was sweating there. All right, look at that. You know what I hate? I hate progress bars that don't actually show progress. You can't just jump from zero to percent to done. Like that's, or a prog, you know what the worst is though? Even worse than a progress bar that jumps from zero to a hundred percent. Progress bars that have like the little animation on them. Oh, I fucking hate that. Cause it feels like, is it going? No, it's just the animation. It's not actually getting more. Or the pinwheel on max. Oh my God. Come on. All right. Okay, I don't know why you got really slow all of a sudden. Maybe I'll close down the cinema. Okay, so now I've imported my scene. I don't know if you can tell, but if I click on the 3D tracker camera and I look through the viewport, well, it seems like my camera is really huge compared to my little teeny, teeny tiny world. This is probably going to happen to you. Luckily, it's pretty easy to not only scale everything down, it's also pretty easy to take what you take your tracked camera and drive it around to a different position in your world. Because that would suck if you had to design your world around your camera, right? You had to design everything around the zero, zero, zero point. That would be tough. Luckily, it's pretty easy to drag it around. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is imported as a data smith, data smith scene actor. That's what this little weird ball-shaped icon is supposed to represent. And see that this is, everything under here is parented to that. So that's the data smith actor. And then we have tracking AP raw. AP is After Effects, um, which... I think is, I just closed down C4D, but that's actually what was in the outliner in C4D was tracking underscore AP raw. And then we have our 3D tracker camera, the cube and the track solid. So if I want to scale this down, because I do, because it's enormous, I just select the top level and I start changing the scale values. That's still way too big. Well, that's looking better. Yeah. That's looking better. It's a little hard to see in that tiny window, so let me go to lit or perspective here and select the 3D tracker camera rather than the editor camera. Okay, okay. I see my scene, but it's actually, I need to rotate my camera. So I'm not actually rotating the camera, I'm rotating the Thing the camera's parented to, right? So the camera has keyframes for every single frame. You don't want to mess with those. If you mess with those, you're in for a world of hurt. You just spent all the time in After Effects tracking that camera, making those keyframes, and then you're going to go and just willy-nilly change them? Come on. It's crazy. So I'm going to rotate this camera. It's like 90 degrees. And actually, this still is too big. So I'm going to scale it down even more oh now we're getting closer okay what if I want to I'm just dragging I'm just changing the values over here I rotated at 90 degrees which you may or may not have to it's completely contingent on the scene that you put it in obviously uh, and the scale is contingent on the scene that you put it in too and also the location that you ultimately drive it in is contingent on your scene too so I'm going to drive this a little bit oh not that way Drive this a little bit to the side. Oh, look, there's my cube. Okay. 
actually, if I pop out of this view really quick, pop out of this view really quick. I'm not entirely sure why Unreal is so slow right now. It shouldn't be. I know this happened to me a couple weeks ago. So notice the cube is going through the ground. The cube, you should trust me on this one. The cube is actually sitting on the ground right now. And the plane, the, the solid is actually on the ground as well. They're just being covered up by this landscape. Some of these other assets here. If I started selecting some of these assets, I could probably peel back some of that. Ground, 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 ground. Yeah, see the plane there and the cube. And that's all right if you cover up the ground, so long as everything matches up from After Effects to Unreal. All right, so this is where my camera is right now, but you know it's just parked there. I don't see it animated or anything. Well, this is where things get fun. This is where we start to see all of our hard work pay off. So when you import the Datasmith file, it asks you where you want to import it to. I imported it into a folder called Comp. It created a folder called Cells3. That was just the name of the C4D file. And it also creates a couple other folders and a file. The red one here, the red one is the Datasmith file. If you were starting with a new scene, a blank scene, you drag this red one into your world. And that's what would put, that's what would put all the camera stuff up here, wherever it is. Yeah, that's what put this stuff in here. Because I had this world open when I did the import, it automatically put it in here for me already. Uh, but you know, if I if I go and said I want a new level right now. I would have to manually drag that in from the content browser. So you just drag the red one in. Other things that are here in the geometries folder is the mesh for the cube and the mesh for the plane. In the animations folder, Datasmith has taken the time to make a sequencer for us already, complete with the camera in it, complete with all the tracked keyframes. So all I need to do is just double click this. Oops, oops, oops. Trying to make that window bigger. Come on. This is probably going to be very slow. Unfortunately, I'm going to restart after we take a break. That's my camera movement that I originally recorded in After Effects of my daughter in the garden. So this could be a useful tool for you outside of this class if you just wanted to do camera tracking to recreate camera movement in Unreal and you didn't have a fancy motion capture setup to do that. The fancy motion capture setup is going to give you a lot more accuracy, but you know we don't all have access to that. Or do you really need it sometimes? Uh, so that's how we import the camera into uh, Unreal using Datasmith. Questions about that? All right. You know what, why don't we take a quick 15 minute break and I'm gonna restart this and I don't want it to be slow when we start to do the composure stuff and I'm not sure why it's slow right now. All right. Uh, apologies for those, uh, the slowdown in Unreal. Turns out my laptop wasn't plugged in. Simple as that. <laughs> I was on battery saver mode. So when in doubt, don't panic, just plug your laptop in. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't panic. Don't cancel class. Just plug it in. So here's a, the smooth camera movement now from the camera tracker. It's the exact same camera movement that was done with these hands in the real world with a real camera now brought into Unreal Engine. Could be neat, could be cool to do. It definitely adds uh, a different level of uh, realism to things. I would say it's really hard to recreate sort of handheld cameras in software. Uh, it's a lot faster to do it live, do it for real if you can. So that's one use case that you can use that completely ignores anything else that we're trying to do in this class. No composure, just track the cameras. Well, let's start doing the composure stuff. Are you all ready? I'm going to start a new level. I guess basic is fine because it has a sun already. I'm not going to save this. All right, new level. And I've already imported my Datasmith file, right? I did that for the pumpkin world already. So all I'm going to do is just drag it into this world, like I was saying before we took a break. It's not in here yet because this is a new level. So I'm going to drag it into it. Now it's here, right? Oh, I was in the queue. I was wondering what that, why was everything dark? Okay. Cool. This actually seems more um, correctly sized as well, for whatever reason. Maybe the pumpkin world, somebody, whoever made that, I got it from the marketplace, whoever made that made it very small. Anyways, uh, I could also open up the sequencer as well that comes with that. And when you do that, if you do that by dragging it in rather than importing it from the get-go, this is something that you might just run into with Unreal in general. Sometimes everything is red in Sequencer. It's very scary. You know it's scary because it's red. And we fix this by going, most of the time that you can fix this by going to the wrench icon. Obviously you need the wrench if you're going to fix it. And then you go to advanced. So wrench, advanced, and it says fix actor references. So this is going to look for the names of these things in my outliner, and it should fix them, which it did. Great. Now if I play this again, it's the same thing we had before, just on a, a weird cube world in the sky rather than pumpkin world. So we're going to start to do the composure stuff now. And you know, you don't you, you could you could do the composure stuff first and then import the camera. You could do import the camera first then do the composure. It doesn't really matter. Um, and there are a couple things that overlap that you're going to need the other one imported for. Um, but in this case, I imported the camera first because I wanted to show you just the ability to do tracked cameras, uh, even without video. Okay. All right, let's do composure. So we have our plugins on. We have our uh, alpha channel project settings set. Now I need to open up the windows for composure, which is now in, where the hell is it? Did I close it down? Oh, it's in virtual production now. So window, virtual production, composure compositing. And we're also going to turn on layers as well. So virtual production, composure compositing, and then we're also going to turn on layers as well. And they're right here. This is what I meant. We're getting small window real estate here. It's going to be even smaller in a second. All right, first things first. First step in composure. We right click in the Composure Compositing window. We right click in the Composure Compositing window. Create new comp. 
you're going to do this a lot of times. We do the same thing every time. Empty comp shot. Click it. Call it whatever you want to call it. I usually just call this comp for composition. Okay. Notice that if I click it, I get a little preview window in the bottom here, just like if I clicked on a camera. Right now it's empty. It's not set up correctly yet, so there's nothing to see. It's not even the right aspect ratio of a camera because I haven't even told it which camera to use. So that's the first step. Now we need to start adding in our CG elements and our media plate. I'm going to do the media plate first. So I'm going to right click, add layer element. Right click, add layer element. It's going to ask us which kind do you want to create. These are the main ones. CG mat is even used less. A media plate and CG layer are the ones that we use uh, always. There's also a couple other classes if you're trying to do uh, more crazy things. We'll click on media plate. It's now parented to the comp. I'm going to change the name of this from media plate to just plain media. All caps. I'm not sure if all caps matters for the compositing material. It's best to just name it exactly the same thing. So the media. If I click on media, nothing. I haven't told it which media to use yet. Okay. In the interest of time, I've already, at some point here, if I can find it, I already imported my video footage. You know, I set up the image media source file for the image sequence. It's the sequence of PNGs that we've been using a lot in this class. Uh, I have my media player here, which unfortunately I just named new media player. Really bad naming. But the point is, is it works uh, just like what we've done before. This is not nothing new right here. You need to get the video into Unreal as an image sequence. Okay, now I need to tell the media source here to use the correct media. So if I click on it and I go down to the details, and the media source right there it says none. Simple enough. Let's just select the right thing that it is. Oops. Select the right thing that it is. There's my unfortunate name, new media player underscore video. That's the right one. It turned white. Something's happening here. We don't have anything to play it yet. We haven't set it up in sequencer or anything like that. But if I play it in the media player, will that play it? Yes, it does. So that means it's working. Okay. Now the next step, and some of these steps can be switched depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm going to just finish setting up the media. I'm going to go back to my sequencer, and I'm going to add the media track like we've done before. So new track, media track. None of this is new. We're just doing it in Composure now. Click on a little plus. Find the media. It's this one. Drag this the full length. Right click on it. Properties. Set it up like we've done before. i got to set the media texture. Media texture. And we don't see anything because I'm not clicked on it. Remember I told you you're not going to really see stuff in here. Unless you click on the compositing elements in the Composure window, all you're going to see is your Unreal stuff. Okay? The magic happens when we click on these things over here. So if I click on the media now and I scrub, it should play. Which, I mean, if you squint your eyes, it kind of looks like they move in the same fashion. right? You don't see them together yet, though. But we can start to see that it's going to work. Oops. All right, next step. Next step is I want to create a, another compositing element. So I'm going to right click on my comp again. 
just like we did when we made the media, create new, or not create a new comp, add layer element. This time I want a CG layer. Compositing element for capturing a portion of the CG scene. Click. What do I want to call this? Foreground, I guess. FG. Keep it simple. So if I click FG now, I look at it, everything's there. By default, everything's there if you don't have any layers assigned to it. I have no layers created yet. That's our next step. So what do I want to put in this layer? I don't know. Let's just put the cube in for right now. So I'm going to click the cube or select whatever it is that you want to have assigned to your foreground compositing element. You can always add more. You can always take things out. Right now, I'm just going to start with the cube to keep it simple. So I select the thing I want to put in there, and I right-click in the Layers window. Right-click. You can also create empty layers. I'm going to add selected actor, the cube, to new layers. Oop, what do I want to call this layer? I don't know, foreground underscore layer, I suppose. So with layers in general, composure or no composure, you can have as many as you want. You can turn the entire layer off with the eyeball, clicking things on and off. Uh, with blueprints, you can turn on layers and turn them off, which is really cool. If you need to batch, turn things on and off. Uh, I found that useful in a couple projects, a couple um, live installation projects before. Um, if you want to see what's in the layer, you need to select it and click the little button down there that says see contents. You might be able to double click it. I don't know for sure. And on the right, the little cement block icon that says I have one thing in there. Can I double click it? Nope. Got to click see contents. Click see contents. Now it's telling me inside of the layer foreground underscore layer, there's a cube inside of it. This is where I can add new things. I can take things out with the X. I can individually hide things if I don't want to fully delete. If I don't want to hide the entire layer, I can individually hide assets here. Click the back button to go back. Okay. So at this point, I need to tell the foreground what it is. The foreground compositing element is just going to be the cube. So let's select the foreground compositing element here. And then in the details panel, you need to scroll down to about the middle, the composure section, and input capture actors. I need to click the plus on the right there next to capture actors. I'm telling it these are the actors I want this compositing element to capture. So I click the plus. It's going to give me an array here. So I have one element here. You could include multiple layers. You just keep clicking the plus and it will keep giving you arrays of more uh, capture actors. I only have one, so all I need is one. So inclusion type include. I want this element, CG element, to include what actor set? Currently actor set none. I need to click that drop down, and it's only going to give me one option because that's all I have foreground underscore layer. As soon as I do that, I should see everything disappear except for the cube. Now here's a tricky thing. Some things don't really play well with Composure. This is something they're working on. This is something that third-party plugins like Offworld Live have uh, had success at hacking. There's no official way to really bypass this sort of stuff. Uh, so we're kind of limited unless we use those third-party plugins. Um, but a lot of times, the if you have exponential height fog in your scene, that will mess things up. And also, if you have a sky atmosphere or a volumetric fog, that will mess things up, meaning that they are actually in, they're not disabled from my foreground element. You know, I don't want the sky in here. I haven't told it to be in here, so why is it in here? Well, 
I can't really have those things with composure, at least how it stands right now. Unless we do some more serious work or use a third party plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. <laughs> so now I just have the cube, right? Another useful tip to know is that it can be annoying. You click off one of these things, the window disappears, right? You want it to stay, click the little pin. That's the same for cameras, too. You can also click the top window to maximize the viewport, too. This is where we start to run out of window space. So if I pin that now and I scrub my sequence, it moves isolated on its own compositing layer. It's exactly what I want. But, you know, it's not, it's not combined with uh, the video yet. I'm looking at the video itself, the media plate by itself, the foreground element by itself. But if I click on comp, up top, which is what I'm eventually going to click on to see everything together, still empty. Still got more work to do. So now I need to click on comp and go into the details for that. First thing is I need to assign it a camera. Target camera actor, currently none. Click the drop down. You probably will only have one thing in there for your camera track. Next thing, transform passes. Zero array elements. Click the plus next to that. Click the flyout menu. We want a compositing element pass or material pass. There's currently no material assigned to this. So I'm going to click the drop down for that. A lot of different ways to create a material, but I'm just going to click drop down for that and then go up and click create new asset material where do I want to save it Let's save it in this folder usually I call this M underscore compositing save now I'm going to double click it we created it, but we haven't set it up yet. Double click it. All right, we need to create a material. First step, this material needs to be a post-processing material. So I go over here to the material domain and change surface to post-processing. Surface to post-process. As soon as I do that, things are going to start to look a little different. I lose a lot of options over here. My screen goes black or goes brown sometimes. That's what we want. Now I'm going to right click and create a 2D uh, texture parameter. Texture parameter 2D, actually. Text texture sample parameter 2D. Texture. I'm just going to copy and paste because I need two of these. It's important that you name them. What were my names? Media and FG. I should probably put the FG organizationally. I should probably put that on top. <laughs> Now I need to create an over node. Right click, over. Get the over node. Foreground plugs into A. The media, because it's underneath the foreground, plugs into B. A over B plugs into emissive color. Remember we're using, I repeat, we are using RGBA. Not RGB, RGBA. If you use RGB, it's an instant fail. RGBA. And that's the material. It's pretty simple, actually. 
So there might be a scenario, I don't know if I'm going to do it in this case, but you know, say I had another, say I made a, a background. So I do the same thing. I need to create the overnode. In this case, I would want to plug this into here and then this into here. Need to use that Q key to straighten everything. So if you had a background below it, the background goes underneath the media plate, the media goes on top of the background, and then both of those things are underneath the foreground CG. We're not doing that right now, so I'm going to undo that. I'm just showing you. I save. Composure is fairly stable, but Always save. Uh-oh, look at that. It doesn't say unknown anymore for error. It looks like it's gonna work. Let me close down some of these windows. Shrink them a little bit. By golly, I think it's working. This is where the window management really suffers. Oh my goodness, look at that. All that stuff to get a cube on top of a video. <laughs> what is this, week eight? Week eight weeks to get a cube on top of a video. <laughs> Cool. So now we could start doing actual world building. Uh, you know, obviously you don't have to start with the cube. I just did that because it's a basic shape. But if I wanted to start to build this out, you know, I'll do a little live world building right now. I'll keep this floor just here as a reference, even though it's not actually in my shot. Also, I'm going to pin this here. Oops, that's why it's screwing up. I need to eject my camera view. All right. So what you do is you world build in this window while you look at this tiny window. Or you drag this tiny window to another monitor or maybe to the side here while you world build. Okay, so what do we got here? I don't know, we got, tis the season again, so we can bring in like, we got a spooky arch or something. Scale this way up. Now it's not popping up, why is it not popping up? Because it's not in the layer, right? So if I wanted to put this big arch in the layer, I have to drag it from my outliner into the layer. In this case, it doesn't really matter to me that everything's in the same layer. Perhaps for whatever you're trying to do, you might want to have separated out layers, especially if you're having a background, obviously. I don't have a background in this case. If you did have a background, so that brings up an interesting point. If you did have a background, there are ways for you to bring in a rotoed version of the person here composite that on top of the background, but underneath or in front of uh, the background CG, but underneath the foreground CG. So a little bit more steps, it's a little bit more tricky. It is nice because you can actually see like an approximation of what it's gonna be when you composite it in After Effects. Personally, I find that, and maybe I've just done this enough time that, you know, if I have if I have the background elements actually like cut through her body, 
I still can visualize it in my head because I know I'm going to chop it out separately in After Effects anyways. Um, but if it helps you to see it in Unreal, that's something that I could show you perhaps next week. Um, this is a couple extra steps. Um, and there is sometimes the, the, if you have more than one media plate, they don't always perfectly align, which is a little annoying. Uh, but for right now, let's just focus on our foreground. So I'm gonna drag this into my foreground layer and it should pop up. There it is. Maybe I'll move this here. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit. I'll play my sequencer to make sure that it doesn't get weird. This should probably be a little bit bigger. Cool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete my cube. I don't need that anymore. Move that. Maybe I want to go and get some some ground. I think I have some assets in here called ground. Oh, there we go. Ground. Also need to drag that into the layer. Everything that you want to put in your scene, you need to drag in the layer. I think it really helps tie things together if you can start to blend the real world ground with the CG. In this case, it's just dirt, right? So maybe I'll place this around a couple spots. Like there. Maybe I'll go and grab some of my fun little pumpkins. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Ooh, this one's spooky. Drag that into the layer as well. Scale that up. Maybe I'll put it back here. And we'll get some more gravestones and stuff. It'd be very spooky. Drag that in, scale it up. You might not have to do the scaling. It depends on you know, how big your world was to begin with and how your camera imported. You see how I'm building in the one window and then looking at it in the comp window. Now I want to go into my camera and put a little depth of field on it. So right now everything's kind of in focus. It looks like with this camera, let me click on the debug focus settings, kind of drive back the focus. Drive back the focus. This is kind of just an approximation of where she is. Because she was in front of that cube, but behind the arch. That looks good to me. I'm going to change the aperture. Very low aperture. Oh, even a 1.2 is not good enough. So I'm going to make the minimum f-stop 0.1 in possible apertures. You know what? Not enough. I'm going to do 0 0.01. Whoa. Good enough for now. Let's see how this looks. Oh, it's getting spooky. What else do we got? Let's put another one in. Scale this guy up. Drag that into my layer. I'm being careful right now not to place things behind her where it would be a problem. I guess it's not a problem because you're compositing in After Effects, but just 
so we don't get confused about things. Hide this cube. You know what? Maybe I'll put that on the other side. There. Maybe I'll go and grab that dirt. Uh, see, that's where it starts to cover up, right? You know what? We really need to start to tie this together. We need some sort of grass, right? There's a lot of grass laying on the ground here. This just got dug up. A lot of plants got turned over in the garden. Grass, what do I have here? Some grass clumps. Drag this in. Drag that into my foreground layer. Scale it up. Oh, that grass looks terrible. I don't want that one. Oh, it's because I'm using the mobile grass. This isn't a mobile phone project. Come on. Let's use the nice high resolution grass. A useful thing you can do with Unreal, just in general, is you know if you want to replace an asset that's in the world with something that else that you select in the content browser, I'm selecting the thing that I want to replace it with, and I'm selecting the object in the world that I want to replace, and I right click. And it says replace selected actor. And then it's just right here at the top. There we go. That looks better. Maybe a little too big. But the idea is here, this is kind of just freestyling. The idea is, is that we start to place things in a way that start to blend the idea of what's real and what's not. I think as soon as we play this with camera movement, it really starts to blend it. I would want to change the color of the grass a little bit. It's a little, little off. Scale up the grass here. getting somewhere. Now the next thing would be lighting. The original video footage is very flat lighting. It was an overcast day, not to mention it's ungraded footage. So very flat, not really very much shadows, no directional shadows really. Uh, so maybe I want to go into my light. My directional light, and maybe play around, play around with it a little bit. Point the shadows down more. Just up the ground. just straight down now and then maybe I want to fill them in so I have my skylight here that I can use and this is something we could talk about in the future using cube maps HDRI 360 capture cube maps to light your scene in this case by default in Unreal there's a couple cube maps that are included already what's happening here out of the box is you see it says checked real-time capture so what this is doing is it's using these things called reflection captures that look at your world and use that as a source to capture. Uh, so if you have you know, a really bright object over here or a really shiny thing over here, it captures that and then reprojects it back on the textures. It's not using ray tracing or anything like that. It's just kind of a hacky way to, to light a scene. But I don't want to do that. 
One, because, well, it's just a black world out there. There's not really much to, sh to capture, right? Uh, and so if I uncheck real-time capture, and then I click this drop-down and say a spe specified cube map, there's a couple in here by default. Different scenes, cloudy day, desert scene. It's actually a, a Epic's old campus. Oops. Honestly, I'm probably just going to use the straight gray ones here. Just to fill in my shadows a little bit. And I can use the intensity scale here to use this as just like a general fill. Maybe I need to lower down the intensity on my actual light first. Up. It's kind of weird because the footage isn't graded, so it might not be best to work with ungraded footage. Shadows. Here we go. In a weird sort of way, you squint a little bit, kind of looks like a graveyard. <laughs> Use a little bit more work coloring wise to match the dirt colors up. Um, I may even want to try to make a mesh of the ground that is a little bit more rough that blends in better. Uh, maybe find grass that is a little bit more scraggly and not so straight up. Um, maybe work on a background to slide behind her. Um, but otherwise, this is the point of this class right here. <laughs> so the next step would be for us to export this and then composite it into our compositing software. Questions? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, good question. So, what if we just uh, import all of the SPS files into the C4D and render all of the objects individually and import them? So you want to build the world in Unreal and then export. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying like, like import all of the assets into the C4D because they have the same camera uh, movement. So if we just render out all of the uh, objects individually in the CC with the alpha camera and import all of them into the AD, and basically like compose it together. Yeah, 100%. The only reason we're using Unreal is because not everybody knows how to use a 3D program, and we don't have time to render. Oh, okay. So this is like one, okay, I see, live, live rendering. It's live rendering, right? It's done. I could screen record this, and assuming I'm getting 30 frames a second, it's done. Well, I would want to color grade it and stuff, and mm -hmm. break it apart to pieces, which we're going to do next week. But yeah, it's done. Cinema, those are going to be a couple hours minimum, right? Not to mention, you're going to have to clean up those assets potentially. Uh, I don't know. It might actually be against the terms of service to use marketplace assets from Unreal in cinema without using Unreal. I don't know. Nobody's going to know, but <laughs> I'll know. <laughs> I've seen that gravestone before. <laughs> um but yeah, I, I've said it before that in our pipeline, traditionally with VFX, we use After Effects to do the camera tracking, maybe, unless you could do the camera tracking in your 3D program, 
If you use Maya and Cinema, you don't even need to do Unreal if you want to do a traditional rendering. Yeah, yeah. So, so much for yeah yeah oh i was thinking that you were saying import the 3d meshes into cinema yeah that's also another because i'm using a blender so it shares the same underlying logic yeah absolutely yeah they all they all do uh but yeah we're just using unreal engine as a renderer and a world builder and it's easy for people that don't know much about 3D to approach because what you see is what you get. You know, it looks like the final, the, that, the lighting on the tombstones, that is the lighting on the tombstones. It's not an approximation until you hit the render button and let it process for hours. Um, and, you know, heaven forbid you wanted to do something live, you would have to use a gaming engine, right? But for more of a, like a traditional thing where our output is rendered video, yeah, you don't have to use Unreal. If you, if you can use Blender or Cinema, it's probably going to look better too because it's going to look better because, uh, you know, you waited for hours for all of those fake photons to bounce around. But yeah, who wants to wait to render? That's the trick, right? Like that one that I was showing with her and the fuzzy balls that were floating in the air that was rendered with cinema because i couldn't do that in unreal because it doesn't have that good of hair you know so there are limitations to things any other questions um so a couple weeks ago you showed us um like we can export like different packages so like an output and stuff like that is there like an easy way to like render out Say this um, each of the objects in the layer or something like that. Yep, absolutely. That's a next week question. Uh, the the simple answer to that is we can use there's there's a couple different ways to to render things up. So the sim simple answer to that is is that the way that we've set things up in composure here really we just have one layer right foreground if i had a background then we we'd have that as well so really in this case composure gives us the ability to render out everything that's in the foreground and everything that's in the background anything that i put in that i think what you're asking is is there more nuance to that where i can actually render out individual pieces in a more efficient way the answer to that is yes, but that really doesn't have anything to do with composure. That's using, uh, oh, what are they called? Stencil layers. S stencil layers and all this fancy stuff that exists in the movie Render Cube. Are you familiar with uh, Crypto Map? Crypto Map? CryptoMat is a really powerful plugin for 3D softwares that basically allow you to assign different meshes or even different pieces of meshes a mesh ID so that when it gets rendered out, you bring it into a software like Nuke or anything that can recognize mesh IDs and it extracts that information, basically creates a map for every mesh ID. That's, that's hardcore compositing. Um, we can do a little bit of that with uh, the movie render queue. And I will show you that next week. And I'll give you a little taste test now. There's a lot of good tutorials online about this already. Uh, stencil layers. But it kind of functions the same way. You put assets in a layer. And then when you render it, there's a drop down that says, which, assets, which layer of assets do you want to render? And... Yeah, this is a good tutorial by this guy. This guy always has good hey. tutorials. Um, but what that ultimately allows you to do, he's fancy here, so he's doing this in Nuke, um, but is able to parse out 
all of these different pieces. I don't know how much he broke this down here, but uh, it's really powerful because, you know, maybe in post you might decide, I want that plant on the left to be, no, I want the plant on the right to be much more blurry. You know, I render this out and, you know, I set up my camera and stuff. I just want to give it a little bit more of a touch to it. So if you had that extracted as a mat, mat already, you just blur it a little bit more, right? Or brighten it up or change the color or, or whatever. And if you really wanted to get crazy, you could have every single piece here be a separate ID that you could then mess with in your compositing software. This video is a really good explanation of that. Epic has another really good one. It's a little confusing because it's in Nuke, but But yeah, we can look at that. I always hesitate to, I always hesitate to show the stencil layers because it's pretty deep dive and it's just more shit that people have to know. <laughs> but we can look at it. Well, here's the crypto mat I was talking about, also by William. I want to see the end result here of CryptoMat and Photoshop. So check this out. This is exported as a series of EXRs. This is what makes EXR files so great, is that EXR files can hold layers. So instead of having, I think I mentioned this last week, instead of having an EXR for your foreground and your background, or whatever, the plant on the left, the plant on the right, the, the vase, the table, you could pack all that information for each frame of video into a single EXR. So instead of having frame one, plant, EXR, <laughs> frame one, table, EXR, and have to combine all this shit together, that's a lot of stuff, you can have it as layers. So like he's gonna unpack that here. This is one EXR file and it has, I think it breaks down, he, I imagine he probably breaks down each plant here as well as the table, or all this, yeah, all this stuff is parsed out as individual pieces. Uh, crypto mat is not built into Photoshop. It's it's a plugin for lots of different softwares for Photoshop for for After Effects. Although After Effects support used to be limited, I'm not sure if they fixed that. Mainly used with Nuke because Nuke is the industry standard for boss level compositing. And you end up with this cool vapor wavy looking thing too. <laughs> that's cool though because if you have that separated out you're like oh I don't want that plant to be green I want it to be slightly less green and you just change it with uh, human saturation rather than having to go back into Unreal into the material, re-render it out all that sort of stuff other questions? Other questions about composure that don't introduce new pipelines today? Are you all composited out? Are you have you lost all composure? Well, I've lost I've lost seventy five percent of the class at this point. <laughs> Okay, um, should we try to go downstairs? Is that crazy in a half an hour? Okay. I look to you because you're the professional. You know, this is... How many people have gotten the safety training already? So this would be useful to just knock this out. Is it, should we do that? Should we just knock it out so you don't have two on your own? All right, let's do it. Let's pack up and we'll just leave from downstairs. I bet there's some ITP people down there wondering why we weren't there at 4 o'clock. Horrible, horrible ITP people.
one, one thing before we step away from the projector. You have an assignment that involves doing what I just did. Okay, so go through the whole pipeline, set up composure, place some pumpkins and tombstones around, record it, screen record it since we, we haven't exported it yet.